Hello, hi, and welcome to the next part of our Unity series, in which we're going to talk about the basic um, game objects. We're going to add a plane, we're going to make our character interact, and also going to quickly talk about colliders and rigid bodies. So those are very important components that you work with all the time. Very basic, very, very important components. So therefore I'm going with exactly what we had the last time and we want to work with the character here a little bit. Um, that means if you select the character, just left clicking here in the um, hierarchy or in the scene view, if you hit F, you're going to zoom in on the character and that's pretty much where we want to be. Um, on the character. Just mouse wheel out a little bit, zooms out. If you if your character isn't in focus nowadays. <laughs> so what we want to do very quickly, learn about the basic components, colliders and rigid bodies, which we both need in order to make game physics interactables in the game. <clears throat> We have created last time the capsule that is our player object. And when you create a new 3D object, it automatically creates a collider with it, the standard components. If you import, sometimes they have colliders, sometimes they don't. You can always add colliders as many as you want. So if I zoom in, the collider itself is shown as this green wire frame. See the, the green stuff that is the collider when I have the object selected. Um, I can activate and deactivate single components by clicking on them. You see, I'm activating and deactivating that set collider for this game object. I just deselect the um, collider. I can also deselect the mesh renderer, deactivating it. Right? Renderer, that's just the visuals of the object, which we don't need in this case. So. If I want to make that collider bigger or smaller, I can simply take the Edit Collider button here. And you see, when you click on Edit Collider, you will get little rectangles that you can drag and drop. Right? So to make the uh, collider the shape you want. There's different types of colliders. I will just press Control Z, Control Z to get back to what I had in the beginning. There's different types of colliders you can give. Every single component can have multiple colliders. When you click on add component, this will add a specific comment, uh, component to your game object. <clears throat> you can either search for colliders by just searching for, hey, where are they? I don't even know where they are because <laughs> I always search for collider. And there we have many different ones. We have many different ones depending on what you want. If this is the player model, I want it as a capsule. I want it to look exactly like the model here. I could also add a box collider, right? And now both are active, right? Um, which doesn't make sense. In this case, I just want one active, which is then the capsule collider. That already makes sense. But you can add multiple colliders to the object. For example, if I want to increase the hitbox size of our character just on the lower part a little bit, I can just make it a little bit bigger on the lower part with the box. Right. But that's not what we want. So I right click on the box collider, I remove the component. That's how you add or remove specific components. <clears throat> yes. Um, now what we want is the player itself we want to be able to control just walking around. That's what the game will be walking around, finding checkpoints, jumping may, uh, a little bit. That's it. Right. Um, of course, you need a level where you can move around, like a ground floor, which in our case will be a plane. So I can just right mouse click here, uh, add a 3D object. We are going to add a plane. This is where the character will be able to walk around in the end. So the plane was created. And if it's not, if the transform is not at 0, 0, 0 for you, just right click the component, reset, and then it's at the zero location. <clears throat> yeah, the plane, like the level that the player walks on should be at zero, zero, zero. In our case, I want to do the player itself. I want a little bit higher so that he walks on the plane. Right? So let's maybe lift that up to 1.5 in the beginning. Right? So if I click play now, you will see that the 
character just floats on top of the plane or the shadows have been automatically added. It, it already looks like something. <clears throat> Uh, maybe you want to change the camera angle, short repetition from last time to select the camera, maybe lift it a little bit, hitting E for the rotate tool and rotating the camera. And there we go. Now we're looking from, from a higher angle on the object. We will change the camera later on anyway, but that's now a little bit nicer. If I click the play button, we have a nice view of the level that we have so far. <clears throat> so that is the collider for the player automatically created. I created the 3D object for the plane, which automatically added a so-called mesh collider. A mesh collider is a special type of collider. A mesh collider makes the um, a collider exactly the shape of the object of the so-called mesh. The mesh that we have is a plane. There's nothing like a plane collider because it's just two-dimensional. That's why we have a mesh collider. <clears throat> For more complex objects, of course, that makes sense to not just have a capsule or a box. No, we want the mesh, which is, which wraps around the uh, object that we have. So we've got those two now. They can theoretically collide, right? So they can hit each other. But what happens if we play? Nothing at all happens. So what we want to do, of course, in the beginning is our character here. If I select it and I put it down, you see nothing at all happens. What I want is that the character itself has a physical behavior. So when they collide, they won't just slide through each other, right? They will, they will hit each other and it will stop the character. So therefore the character needs to be a physical component. A physical component um, is also called a rigid body, right? A rigid body. So I'm going to add a component to our character. You call that rigid body. And a rigid body, you see, is a real physical component. It's got a speed, it's got a velocity, angular velocity, it's got inertia, all that nice stuff that you want from a physical component. That stuff that has, it's a simplified model, but still, that's what a physical model has in reality as well. So I'm going to get, ah, oh, let's leave the info open. If I now click play, if I now click play, because use gravity is on from the beginning on, and we have a mass, right? An object that has a mass and uses gravity, make a guess, will fall down. It was very quick. You saw it falling very quick because it's not too high. But if I grab my player now and lift it up by just increasing the Y value here, if I lift it up, it automatically drops down. And that is the physical behavior of a rigid body. There are more components in here, more values, more parameters that we can change. The mass, of course, mass, if two objects hit each other, what happens? One pushes the other, uh, the other pushes the one, or they bounce from each other, stuff like that. Or how fast, how strong is gravity and that kind of stuff all depends on the mass. So we won't do much calculations here. So just leave the mass at one. Drag makes the model a little bit draggy a little bit slower like uh, right now the drag is zero so if i lift my player it's pretty easy for me to lift and to drop if i increase the drag let's make it maybe a drag of two you will see it drags it slowly drags through the sky it is like like going through soup <laughs> right there's a drag to it <clears throat> uh, the same we have with angular drag of course it is like when we tilt the character later on, the higher the angular drag, the, 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 the more difficult it is to actually rotate the character on a physical level. <clears throat> now, of course, we can activate deactivate gravity. If I deactivate gravity, lift the character, what's going to happen? Nothing anymore. I can reactivate it. Uh, if I activate the is kinematic, that will make the object freeze in place. Freezing in place sometimes makes sense. Later on, we will see that for triggers, for things that should be in one spot and you still want the physical interaction with other components. For the player, usually you don't want that. Um, the interpolation, not too important. <laughs> the, keeping it off in most places, that's more advanced. <clears throat> Collision detection might be important. Collision detection is discrete, means it gets only calculated when two components hit. Continuous means it always calculates. Even if the character mo uh, moves, if it hit already, it still recalculates. Of course, continuous takes more um, calculating power, more RAM in the end, but 
sometimes it pays off. For our player, it would probably make sense to put it to continuous. So if we later on see it doesn't behave exactly as we want, putting it on continuous might make a lot of sense. For now, it's very simple. We don't need that. <clears throat> We can also put some constraints, right? We can freeze single positions. If I freeze the Y position, for example, I can lift it up and it won't drop anymore because Y is frozen. Um, I can also make that with specific rotation angles, which makes sense if we don't want the character to fall uh, this way, only this way. Freezing one rotation layer makes sense. Yeah, so that's the basic rigid body component. Right, the basic rigid body component. You see our player can already be lifted and it falls down pretty slow because of the drag right now. Um, if I stop the play again, oh, that, that's a, an important thing. If you are in the play editor, if you're playing the game right now and you change values like what I'm doing and you're to test it and you're stopping the game again, it will reset the values to what you had before. So that's very, very useful, very handy for testing. Forgot to mention it. Good. That is already the basics of rigid bodies and colliders, right? If I would deactivate, for example, the collider on our plane here, what would happen? The character will fall th right through because, hey, we don't have the collider activated. Um, the last thing to talk about colliders, they also have a convex. Convex makes the uh, collider more simple structured. It limits the amount of edges of, of points that the collider has and we have an is trigger component the is trigger component will get important later on the parameter is trigger where a trigger the component now will still fall through the player uh, because the plane is only a trigger you can go through it but the detection is still active right that is important for sensors later on but for now that was the basics of rigid bodies and colliders. And with those, we can already build a simple level. We can't move yet, but we could build ourselves a simple level. The next time we're talking a bit about um, physics materials and changing materials in general, but that will be the next time. That was already 12 minutes, trying to keep it short and simple here. Uh, yeah. Next time we're talking about materials. So thank you for watching. If you've got questions, if you've got any notes, leave them in the comment box below. I like to make those videos. I like to make those tutorials very much actually, but I try to keep them very short. Make like 10, 15 minute little videos that you go like every day, a video in a month, you know what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked it, leave a like, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time around stay safe stay healthy and bye bye